Hey guys, me yet again. I figure since I made you read this last week and take a quiz on it, I should go over it a bit and, and point out a few of the mo more important things. Um, thank you guys for reading it and, and knocking that out. Um, I appreciate that. One of the things to watch out for in your own writing, um, I should say that this piece is older, and I'm sure when you read it, you realized that. Um, but the basic ideas the author is discussing are, are still excellent ideas when it comes to writing. And even though the piece is dated, the, the advice isn't. Um, one of the things to be careful of in your own writing is saying, in my opinion, or I think, or it seems to me, anything like that, um, it, it softens what it is you're saying. In polite conversation, we do that all the time, and that's perfectly acceptable. But in an essay, you want to come out and sound definite. You want to not say, I think Star Wars is a movie for children. You want to come out and say, Star Wars is a movie for children. And then take it from there and support your argument and, and explain your thoughts. One of the reasons you don't need to see say I think, or in my opinion, is because your instructors will realize as long as your name is on the paper and you're not telling us it's somebody else's quotation or idea, we understand the whole paper is your opinion or what you think. And that's, that's perfectly fine without saying it. It makes your argument much more solid to get out of the habit of, of using those terms in your writing. And that's really a, a big difference. Um, there's also this notion of what this author refers to perfectly as being expected to make a dull subject interesting. As he says, that is the writer's essential task. It is to make things that are dull interesting. All subjects except sex are dull until somebody makes them interesting. And that is a tough thing. It, it's tough to take something that is assigned to you. Um, very few of us would ever write an essay if we did not have to do it for a grade in a class that is required of us so we can have a degree. So it's tough to take something that isn't always of interest and somehow make it interesting, but that, that is what we end up having to do. Um, a few ways to do that, as this author points out. One of them is avoid the obvious content. If you can imagine all of your classmates writing the same thing to the same prompt, then say something different, please. Your humble writing instructors are human beings, and we value variety, and it's wonderful to see different ideas. Um, and that sort of acknowledging that others have already said things so many times and then go going back and, and saying something different instead of what's been said so many times is really a, a great move in your writing. Um, again, just avoiding what is already there is, um, can't overstate how important that is. There's also, the useful advice to take the less usual side. This, your, your college papers, in especially in writing classes, composition classes, um, they're not designed to get to your actual beliefs. It, it's pretty much none of my business what you believe or don't believe. It's an academic exercise. It's seeing if you can analyze, put that analysis into thoughts, be creative and interesting. That's the point of your writing. Um, we, we end up having to use sources, cite them correctly using formats of APA or MLA or things that the university will, will have you do. And a good way to, to, to make all of this come together nicely is, is, as this author writes, take the less usual side. Don't worry about what you believe. Come in from a different standpoint. Doing something, you writing about something that, that is opposite of what you believe very often turns out to be a much more interesting and thoughtful paper because it requires some thought, 
um, to do it if, you know, and, and that that's a good move also. All right. This idea, this one is especially helpful for students who struggle with a page limit. Um, I'm asking you for four pages on this one. We're on to the fourth page. Students can panic and after two paragraphs say, I already have said everything I wanted to say. What do I do now? Slipping out of abstraction is a good way. All that means is be specific. Um, you know, th those details when you write can mean so much as far as I got in my car or I got in my Mitsubishi Outland. I was playing video games or I was playing Call of Duty. Those differences all also point to playing Call of Duty is a very different video game than, you know, a, a Warcraft online multiplayer game that, that goes on for hundreds of years. And it's the same with music. I was listening to music. Let us know what you were listening to. Not only do those take space, but they do it in a manner that's not just killing space. It's actually using it to let the reader know something. And that is extremely valuable when you write. Um, don't pad your sentences. If you can say something well in two words instead of 20, say it in two words. Um, just add more helpful content if you need to fill space. But the padding is, is, is just don't do that. Don't be padding stuff. And um, this touches here again on the idea of the in my opinions. It seems to me, I think, uh, just avoid those. Um, so important, I mentioned it twice to you. And I think that gets us about where we want to go. Yeah, good enough. That'll do. You guys don't need to spend your whole day watching me read something. Uh, thank you guys once again for reading this and knocking it out. But I wanted to point to a few of the ideas since we're not in a classroom where I can discuss them with you. Thank you again and talk to you later.